This video predicts the NBA's Eastern Conference standings. At number 15, I have the Indiana Pacers. I loved Indiana's selection of Benedict Matherin, and I really wanted the Raptors to trade up for him. The Canadian out of Arizona is going to be an all-star one day, but with the GM and the Lakers only needing to unload their 2027 and 2029 first rounders to receive Buddy Heald and Miles Turner, it's only a matter of time before it's a full-on Indianapolis tank job. Even if the Lakers stick with what they said they'd do, which is hang on to those picks, I just don't see the Pacers being too competitive this year. Next up are the Detroit Pistons at number 14, who just traded Kelly Olenek to the Utah Jazz for Boyan Bogdanovich. The backcourt combo of Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham has a chance to surprise some people, but by trading Jeremy Grant to Portland in exchange for several picks and a rookie, the Motor City's front office is evidently geared towards the future. The loss of 20 point per game scorer Miles Bridges, who was arrested for domestic violence, is going to have a massive impact on the Charlotte Hornets' chances in 2023. That's why the Michael Jordan-owned franchise and LaMelo Ball-led team from Buzz City has a down year, finishing 13th in their conference, flying south to Orlando, and after finishing dead last in the conference last season, I expect the Paolo Boncaro-led Magic to move up three spots to 12th place. And who knows, with the development of a versatile two-way forward who can do it all in Franz Wagner, the team's 8th overall pick in 2021, the Magic could be a lot better this year. Kyle Kuzma and another Washington stretch big in Kristaps Porzingis are entering the prime of their careers. Bradley Beal just signed a shiny brand new 5-year max contract. The pickup of a shifty guard in Monte Morris was a good one. Rui Hachimura and Denny Avdia should take steps in the right direction. But it still won't be enough to make the team from the nation's capital relevant. The Wizards will be the 11th seed in 2022-23. Moving on to the Bronx, and coming in at number 10, I have the New York Knicks. Despite being memed for having a mid-three, Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett, and Julius Randle is a solid cast of top weapons who are going to make New York a respectable group in 2023. In a deep Eastern Conference, it won't be good enough to make the playoffs, but look for the feisty Tom Thibodeau coached ball club to make some noise this year. At number 9, I have the Chicago Bulls, who have a chance to make this prediction look silly. Thing is, I'm worried about Lonzo Ball's knee injury, which he's going to be out the first 4-6 to six weeks of the season with at least, after spending the entire offseason recovering from the same injury. Don't forget, Ball missed the final 4 months of his rookie year in LA with a sprained ankle, and the Bulls are night and day better with Zoe's defense and playmaking. Getting Patrick Williams back will be huge though, and rookie Dalen Terry, another former Arizona Wildcat, helped fuel the Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic, and Caruso-led Bulls into the play-in tournament. The Donovan Mitchell blockbuster trade between the Jazz and Cavaliers got its fair share of hype, with Kendrick Perkins claiming that the Cavaliers now have the best starting five in the NBA. Don't get me wrong, the addition of the Spida makes Cleveland night and day more dangerous, and gives Cleveland one of the best backcourts in the association with a rising sensation like Darius Garland being paired with D. Mitch. I'm a big fan of potential lockdown wing Isaac Okoro and ROI runner-up Evan Mobley, but the Cavs are just a tad bit too young to be ranked higher than number 8 in the East. Still, it'll be nice for fans in Cleveland to see a playoff appearance. The Brooklyn Nets will start the season with 0% chemistry after Kevin Durant demanded a trade, which after no one wanted him, resulted in the organization folding, getting on their hands and knees, and begging KD to stay. Kyrie Irving just responded to the Nets getting swept to the Celtics last spring, saying, quote unquote, we needed that. And given Brooklyn only lost by at most seven points over those four outings, maybe the Nets are better than I think. Only problem is the chemistry, as Irving nearly didn't opt into his deal to stay in Brooklyn, and after Ben Simmons just stated that he still feels like he's a member of the 76ers, who knows where the Aussie's mind is going to be. So Brooklyn being the seventh seed may seem ridiculous right now, but I'm really not sure how things will play out off the court in Kings County. At number six in the East, I have the Atlanta Hawks, who after getting two wins from reaching the finals in 2021, succumbed to the injury bug this past season. John Collins missed 28 games, DeAndre Hunter missed 29, and Bogdan Bogdanovich missed 19. Acquiring one of the best two-way combo guards in DeJounte Murray, who's 25 and on a cheap contract for two more seasons, not to mention is still improving his offensive repertoire, 
was an absolute steal of a trade for Atlanta, despite the fact that they gave up three future first rounders. Best part about DeJounte's fit in Atlanta is how he compliments Trey Young. Despite being the Eastern Conference version of Stephen Curry, Trey's primary weakness is his lack of defensive value, and that's why this year's Steals champion and a 2018 all-defensive team player in DeJounte Murray is going to lead the Hawks to a bounce-back season. Fifth seed in the East for a second straight year will be the Pascal Siakam, Scotty Barnes, Freddie Van Vliet led Toronto Raptors. They may not get the proper mainstream media attention, but the fact that Toronto was the only NBA team last year with five 15 plus point per game scores with Siakam, Barnes, Van Vliet, along with Gary Trent Jr. and OG Ananobi, makes the young, defensive minded raps a lot better than people think. There's no superstar player but Siakam has a chance to elevate into that type of guy this year, and as we've talked about in prior videos, the upside of Scotty Barnes is off the charts. At number 4, I have the Philadelphia 76ers. James Harden and Joel Embiid are about to go through their first training camp together. Two all-stars who, despite having their fair share of playoff shortcomings, have a chance to rewrite the narrative in 2023. The development from Tyrese Maxey, the trade for a solid two-way wing in DeAnthony Melton, and signing of debatably the NBA's best wing stopper in PJ Tucker make the 76ers debatably a top three seed. Third seed in the East, though, is the Boston Celtics, who aren't only going to be without coach Ime Udoka for the season, but the best defensive center in basketball in the Time Lord Robert Williams is going to be out for the next 8 to 12 weeks after undergoing left knee surgery. Jason Tatum spoken highly of Boston's interim head coach Joe Mazzulla, but before the incident, Udoka had a big impact on the team's culture, so it'll be interesting to see how the Celtics respond. Reason I'm not too worried about this debacle comes down to Boston having vocal leaders like Al Horford, Jalen Brown, and Marcus Smart, so the reigning East champions should be alright. Pat Riley calling out Kyle Lowry for his weight seemed to pay off as North Philly's finest looks in shape for the Miami Heat entering training camp. The Heat came up one pull-up jumper away from reaching the finals, but despite missing the shot, Butler was still undeniably snubbed from the top 10 of ESPN's player rankings. Instead, Jimmy Buckets was ranked as the 17th best player, which is insane after he averaged over 30 plus points against the Hawks in round 1, 27 and a half in round 2, and 25.6 in the conference finals. Along with having an absolute scoring machine and elite defender in Jimmy, the Heat's young core is also impressive. Bam Adebayo gets his fair share of hate from fans on Twitter, but he's one of the best passing centers in the game whose two-way impact is off the charts. Many people forget the man just turned 25 years old. I expect a big season from Miami's locomotive in the middle, Bam Adebayo. For Team Greece in the Eurobasket tournament, Giannis Adetokounmpo's post fadeaway looked extremely polished, and he of course resembled the most dominant player on earth with his slashing. You hope Giannis isn't worn down from carrying Team Greece, but the reason the Bucks will be the number one seed in the East comes down to the chip on their shoulder after losing in seven to the eventual conference champions in 2022 in the Boston Celtics. Expect a more driven version of Drew, Chris, and Giannis a big three that I've labeled as the best trio in the world at the moment. What no one talks about with the Bucks is the supporting cast around those three, okay. featuring a stretch big who defensively is always among the top ranked players in contested shots, Big Brook Lopez. Additionally, Pat Connaughton is a criminally underrated floor spacer who averaged 10 points on 54-42-100 shooting splits in the second round against Boston. Then there's the glue guy Bobby Portis, whose player efficiency rating was just behind Middleton's in 21-22, so don't overlook what the fan favorite brings to Cream City. Who's the most underrated Eastern Conference team? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Two shout outs from my last two uploads go to Patrick Coley and Michael White. Thanks for watching.